forwards. This is where the upper echelon players live. This is where the potential MVP MVP players live. Brandon Ingram, you're not in this conversation anymore. You can listen though, learn, and you'll get there one day. But right now, at number three, we have Jimmy Butler. What a playoff performance he had. Very, very well deserving of number three. Yeah, I mean, anyone who plays 38 and a half minutes in the playoffs throughout 21 games, immediately, like you said, it was there for a reason. He w- might have not been a guy who put up 30 per game and 10 rebounds and all the stuff in the playoffs, but in terms of being the factor guy in and every night, whether it was offensively, defensively, being a spark plug, it was Jimmy Butler for Miami. It was one of the best recent playoff performances we've seen throughout an entire run. Um, in terms he was their of, point guard pretty much too. Yeah. So yeah, I, you're right. Yeah, and even then, it's in the in the regular season too. It's not like this guy was bad by any means. Again, first in minutes played among small players. This is a, is a guy who I feel like he just loves to be in carnage. Yeah. Like he, he loves to play, but he loves the, the carnage. He loves the adrenaline. He loves everything that's wrong with the game of basketball, and that's why Jimmy Butler's just so fun to watch. He just doesn't care what's happening. He wants to get in there. He wants to make a difference, and he finds a way to do it night in and night out. And he's someone who every year has we we never he's gotten better every year essentially. He's not someone that right out the gate that we didn't think he was going to be a star level player, but he got to that star level player probably right before he got to, went to Philly. When he went when he went to Minnesota, he went there as a star player, and he's gone from a couple different teams now at this point. But Miami really does seem like his home. He's the best player there since LeBron James left. Very, very easily the best player there since LeBron and James left. He's a great player in that, that run that he showed in the playoffs. Wow. It, it, he was heart and soul. Defensively, he's right up there with Kawhi as the best defensive player in the game. Yeah. And he has been for a couple of years. Yeah, and it's a guy who is not afraid to shoot in the clutch. It, he, it, like I said, it doesn't matter. If there's a time that some guys shy away from a situation, Jimmy Butler wants to step up. Um, some people might criticize him in terms of not being a great teammate, whatever it is. Miami loves him. Every player there loves him. Guys who, okay. guys who aren't the typical kind of diva kind of situation, or they're very, I guess, more sensitive nowadays. Anyone who is, <laughs> anyone who's real and they don't, and they kind of are, I guess, a true basketball player. They love Jimmy Butler. It's really just, I guess, maybe some coaching staffs who don't want an outspoken player, who don't want to see change. It's, it'd be like working at a startup company where they just want to hear yes all the time. If that's Jimmy Butler's environment, he doesn't thrive. When Jimmy Butler could just play the game, could you, you see Jimmy in the locker room, it's like, hey, what's up? What are you thinking? And he gives an honest answer. That's the best Jimmy Butler. And I feel like Pat Riley and him just mesh in that regard too. Yeah, and Spolster as well, right? Um, Butler, is he just went to that team, and he's fit so well since the beginning. It's, he showed us last year that his three-point shooting was actually the low, lowest of his career. Yep. Um, he showed us last year he didn't need that anymore. In the playoff, they turned it around a little bit, and he shot much better, which is why I'm not shitting on his three-point shooting. But he, he did have his worst year of his career last year. It wasn't even close. Um, but that being said, he doesn't need it. He's that good defensively, and he still puts up over over 20 points per game. He's not the mid-range specialist that someone like DeMar DeRozan is, and he's not around the rim like the level of LeBron James. But he does a little bit of everything, and then defensively, he blows everyone else out of the water. Yeah, it's like you said about a little bit of everything. Like the two guys above him, they're, they're really big differences that they're one and two in every major stat category. But in terms of being consistent throughout, Jimmy Butler's top five in everything. He was fifth in points at 20.6 for small forwards, third in rebounds, 6.6, second in assists for small forwards, second in steals for small forwards, second in offensive rebounding, first in free throw attempts for small forwards, fifth in a real plus minus, fourth in wins added. Like there's not... A, there's one stat or two stats that Jimmy Butler, in terms of major stat categories, isn't top five for small forwards. And that just goes to show, again, that this guy truly does everything. 
Um, and it's always speaks to how much, like, how annoying Jimmy Butler must be to play against, where, like you said, he doesn't shoot well from the three. He's not a great pull-up shooter, but he still finds a way to put up over 20 per game, and it's because he gets to the line so much, where he might not have the finishing ability, but when, like, a guy's going in there and he's drawing these fouls, and, like, at some point it's like, like, fuck off, man. Like, just, like, just give me a break. Like, I don't want, like, I didn't even touch you. Like, how are you getting, like, that's the type of player that Jimmy Butler is, where, like, on some nights it just feels like, the refs are in his hands and he's just getting these calls and it's just how good he is at just getting to the getting to the basket to not the right spot dealing with the contact and just powering through yeah he has a pretty good percentage of and ones he does a lot of uh, he makes people jump all the time which i find funny because he's not even that great of a shooter yeah like he's a way better shooter for he's a way better shooting two shots from the free throw line than he is shooting a uh turn around, pull back, fade away jumper. And that's what I mean. That's why it's almost annoying where I feel like it's him playing with people where like he knows the easiest way to score is to have the free bucket. And he's like, I'm just going to find a way to get it as many times as I can a game. Like it, I think, I want to say it was almost 10 attempts per game he had at the free throw line last year. He's probably second in the league in that when it comes just behind Harden. And that's only 20, and he only had 20 points per game. So we could say probably about 40% of his points last year, maybe even a bit more, came from the free throw line. Uh, good old Jimmy. Jimmy Buckets, keep keep doing, doing your thing over in Miami. If Miami gets an actual third star, um, no offense to Goran Dragic, but if they get an actual third star, Butler is likely still a leading player on that team. I think that was the biggest issue with Philly is that no matter what, what kind of attitude Butler had, they all just thought he had an attitude, and they all thought that he thought he was the best player and they should all do things his way. They probably should have. Yeah, I mean, there's even an interview you guys can go up if you're still watching um, with JJ and Jimmy. The whole segment is just great, but there was one scenario where they were talking about something that happened after practice where it was Jimmy, Joel, and JJ. They got brought into the locker room after practice that the morale was kind of down, and they asked if they could do everything different. And the traditional response is obviously you're just like, nah, it's all good. And I guess Jimmy that day, TJ McConnell had said something, so he wanted to speak up for TJ, and he, like, apparently Apparently, Jimmy said he didn't name drop him, but J JJ Reddick said he did name drop him. So I guess it was like little things like that where he didn't have any bad intent. He was trying to speak up for someone else in the team and being like, well, TJ, like, this is what TJ's really good at. We don't do enough of it. Maybe we could do more. And like everyone was like, why are you speaking? Like they took it the wrong way, I guess. And it's things like that where he's a true leader. He's not afraid to not only speak for himself, but other people. And some people just take it the wrong way and they shouldn't. Yeah. That's just it, right? It was the same issue we had in Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, when you have a guy with the talent of talents and you have Wiggins, who is whatever Wiggins is, yeah. A talented player in his own right. In Miami, he really went there and right away, Spolstra said, Jimmy, you're the leader of this team. This is your team. We're going as far as you take us. And look how much better he made so many players. Yeah. We, we'd never heard of Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero. Um, hell, Bam Adebayo had a career year with Jimmy Butler. He he just brought a certain attitude with him. He was in the right system, a system that works hard. I've heard Dwayne Wade say that about the Miami system, that they no one works as hard as Miami players. Haslam said the same thing. He's been his whole career in Miami. They, they work their players a certain way, not that it makes them tired. They work them a certain way that makes them the most productive they can be in their whole career. And that's what he in that place. Like he needs someone like to keep him grounded to like like every day be in the gym and like like you said, it's just the perfect fit for Jimmy Butler. I don't see him leaving anytime soon. And at the very minimum, he's gonna be in our top five for like the next three, four, five years easily. Before last year, he may have not been in this conversation before, but yeah. now he is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I mean when you're making like when you bring a team to an NBA final you're solidifying yourself, like you said, in that category. It's like the Allen Iverson thing where, yes, I know he's not the scorer Allen Iverson was, but Jimmy Butler brought that team to the NBA final. Allen Iverson was the guy who brought his team there, where, I, again, I know a bit better players. A AI's team was a bit... Exactly. Yeah. But, but, again, the fact that he could do it, and when we look at the teams he did against Milwaukee, Boston, like, it, there were some good teams. They were good. Yeah. And so... Did that Boston team beat us. Yeah, and Milwaukee. They had, they had Giannis. They had Chris Middleton. So, I mean, they weren't supposed to beat Miami, and they did it like it was nothing. Did they sweep them? Yeah. I think so, yeah. It was, they swept Incredible. her, five, but yeah. Yeah. 
It's incredible. I can't say he had a great year. He he took a, b- a batch of players and took them to another level. And that's what superstars do. That's what true superstars do. That's what puts them on a different level as than uh, Brandon Ingram, Jalen Brown, Middleton. Or the true superstar takes your team to another level. Exactly. And that's what Jimmy Butler did last year. Couldn't agree more. Well, going on 